everybody, and welcome to this podcast from morning to night. I am your host, Dr. Damon Silas. And on today's podcast, we have a very special guest. I am so excited to have my guest here today. Um, I'll talk a little bit about her, but I actually had the pleasure and honor of being on her podcast and online summit last year regarding grief. And her name is Melo Garcia. And I am just going to read a quick bio of her because I want you to understand who we are talking about and how special we we have of a guest today. Uh, Melo Garcia, who is also known as After Chloe, is a grief specialist who serves those finding their way after the loss of a loved one. AfterChloe.com was started in 2015 to provide tools and resources to those struggling with loss. Mello resides in Southern California with her two pit bull rescues. She enjoys reality TV, watch out, anything that involves laughing, and sometimes a hike or a slow-paced short-distance run. So let's be clear about that short-distance run, right? (laughs) Um, So it's my pleasure to um, introduce Mello Garcia. Welcome to the From Morning to Action podcast. Dr. Silas, how are you? It's so good to see and talk with you. I am so excited. Congratulations on your podcast. You know that I love and support everything you do. So thank you for having me today. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, And you are definitely an inspiration to me, especially when we talk about working through loss and using our platform and using our voices to help those who may be going through something very similar to what we've gone through. Yeah, and, and so can you do me a favor, and actually speaking of, just tell the people, you know, what you've gone through, what kinds of losses you've experienced, and we'll start there. Gosh, you know, in 2010, um, on a Sunday afternoon, my mom um, started to call me, and um, at the time, my husband worked graveyard shifts, so it was really kind of abnormal, and she kept calling, and I answered the phone and my dad had gone into the restroom and he wouldn't come out. And I just got this feeling and it turned out that my dad had a heart attack. He got an aneurysm and it traveled to his heart and it instantly killed him. Mm. Um, It was known as a cardiac aneurysm and, and basically a heart attack. And so he had a heart attack at the time I lived 11, I'm sorry, six hours away. Um, Mm. It felt like 11 Um, and I lived in Las Vegas at the time my parents lived in Southern California. And so, um, we drove and, um, we went and that evening, my mom had a massive heart attack after my dad had passed away. They'd been married. Mm. I think they were three days short of being married, um, 47 years at the time. And so, um, she had a massive heart attack. And so she went into the hospital and they said that she was too unhealthy to undergo open heart surgery, but that she was given maybe a few days to live. And so I was kind of faced with that and I started to feel really odd and kind of off. And me and my husband at the time, we had kind of faced, um, a miscarriage and, and we had looked at trying to have a baby and we had already been looking at fertility and we were going to start a cycle, um, probably a month or a month and a half after, you know, my, my dad had passed away and Mm -hmm. we had already decided to put it on hold. And so I went to the doctor in August and I was going to tell, I was going to put it on hold and I was told I was pregnant and, Mm. um, I was pregnant and, um, I was, uh, expecting. And so I was then told that I was a high risk pregnancy and I was immediately put on bed rest because my mom was still in the hospital. And so my mom was in Southern California. I was in Las Vegas. It became a very high stress situation. And so my daughter, Chloe was born in, um, on December 29th, 2010. And my dad had just passed away on July 27th, 2010. And she was born at 24 weeks gestation. And we were told that she was not going to make it through that night. Um, and she ended up li- living for 57 days inside the NICU and she developed NEC and, um, her gut ended up dying. She underwent, I believe three surgeries and on 
February 22nd, during the last surgery, um, they realized that the gut had completely been destroyed, the small intestine. And we were faced with the fact that she would never fully develop and that she would end up dying um, of NEC. So basically, she was starving to death um, in layman's terms. And so uh, she died that afternoon, February 22nd. I still had my mom and at the time, Chloe's dad, my husband. And um, my mom lived for another year, and she ended up passing away October 14th, 2012, of heart disease. And by that time, I was completely checked out um, and hysterical, as you can probably imagine. Mm -hmm. And um, a month after my mom died, Chloe's dad walked in and said, um, I want a divorce. And he left. And uh, I spent that first holiday, um, October 14th, 2012. So that first holiday, I spent it alone and I contemplated suicide. Mm -hmm. And by that time, I had already gone to over 14 different therapists. And none of them talked grief. And what I mean by that is none of them talked to me about life after loss and none of them understood. They kept talk to, talking to me about these five stages and I was stunted at being able to breathe, mm. move, talk. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my journey, the way that it started. Wow. So first and foremost, let me say thank you so much for sharing your story. What a, uh, I mean, a lot of people when they hear just of one loss, for instance, they might say, oh my goodness, I don't know how I'd be able to make it through the loss of a parent. Um, some people might say, I don't know how I'd be able to make it through the loss of a child. Um, here you are talking about the loss of both parents within two years of each other, correct? And within that span of time, the loss of your daughter. Not to mention, then your husband divorces you. How... How do you, how would you tell the people, you know, what has gotten you through? Because I can imagine, as you said, there was some suicidal ideation or thought about it. And so what, how are you here? How are you here? You know, it's funny because when my mom died, the first thing that I felt is that I was no longer being prayed for. And what it forced me to do is to have a direct relationship with God and that's a really mm. deep personal thing. Mm -hmm. But I'll be honest, like I, I always knew like my mom had that covered. And it's funny because if you knew my parents, like everything that they lived for, everything they did was to love me. It was to make sure that I was okay. And my mom would always say, one day I'm not going to be here. So you need to understand and know that whatever you face, God has you. And I would be like, okay, mom, whatever. And I had faced, you know, I had a boyfriend when I was 23 that was murdered. And, you know, he, he was a guy that I was dating, but we'd gone to high school together. And then when I was 30, my, one of my best friends developed brain cancer and he died within, um, you know, eight months of the diagnosis. And, and that was devastating. Mm -hmm. But never imagining or fathoming to face the loss. And you kind of go into this... Um, sink or swim mentality, um, at least me personally, where it was just like, I just had to get to the next step. And so it was, it was just kind of this focus to just get through this very moment. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I realize now today, when I look back, I don't know. I think I said that a lot, right. In our, and when we were talking prior to coming on, I, I don't know. I, I think that it's the grace of God. Right. And, and for mm -hmm. those that are non-believers, I think that you have to decide that you're only going to focus on this very moment. You can't go too far ahead and you can't go too far behind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, that's the only way I couldn't think about the holidays next year. I had to only face this very moment. It being whatever today's date is and at whatever time mm -hmm. of the day it is, I can't go too far ahead. And I'm talking minute to minute to minute and that's really how I just started to face each minute at a time. And then it was each day. And then it was each hour. And then it was each month. And then 
before I knew it, a year had passed and then the next year and the next year. And so, um, that was the immediate. And then the long, the, the, the more of a, the mindset was, is that either I was going to kill myself or I was going to make a difference. And I knew mm. that killing myself wasn't going to make any difference. And I wasn't going to go out like that. Wow. And I wasn't going to allow loss to take anything else away from me. Mm -hmm. So I decided that that loss was not going to ever take anything from me again in the sense of this life is a gift. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. the only one I've got. And so I understood that I had to start living it and I didn't know how I didn't have any resemblance of a life. I didn't have anybody. I was alone. I was afraid. It was, you know, not like a lifetime movie because I've been blessed, incredibly blessed by people that have been kind and loving, but there is a difference when you don't have your immediate blood family, mm -hmm. your parents, the person that you exchange vows with to spend the rest of your life with that you chose to have a baby with and obviously your child that you're doing everything for physically here with you right. so right. I had to make sense of that to understand that I had to give myself and so I knew that I wanted to create something in my mind and I didn't know what that was and um I went to this function because I thought, well, I'm just going to do charity work. And mm -hmm. I went to this function called, you know, Mar we all know March of Dimes. And there were the, where there was this couple on YouTube being honored. And Benji and Judy Travis, she has this very popular um, YouTube channel called It's Judy's Time. And they were, they say they raised all this money for March of Dimes. And so I, I was lonely. And so I would watch YouTube videos every day, all day. I, I couldn't afford cable. Mm. And um, I would watch them. And all of a sudden, I see this little guy. And he had this little light about him. And his name was Michael Gevin. And he had a YouTube channel. And it was July 23rd, 2014. That's the day my life changed. I clicked on his channel and he said, hey, do you want to be a jump starter? On September 4th, that's my birthday. I'm going to start jump starters and I want you to join me. And I thought, he's talking to me. Now, this is a YouTube video. Keep in mind. Mm -hmm. So me being me. I went, I watched his YouTube video. I went on Facebook. I didn't know social media whatsoever. And I joined. I sent him a message. I said, hi, Michael. This is my story. Before I knew it, he had reached out to me. And I said, I want you to be my mentor. I need to start something. I don't know what I want to start, but I want to help people get through loss. I want to help the mellows of the world. Mm. He said, okay, what do you want the name to be? I said, I want the name to be after Chloe. And he said, okay, what do you want it to look like? I said, I don't know. He said, okay, well, my girlfriend is a graphic artist. I said, okay. I said, I don't have any money. He said, don't worry about that. He said, I'm going to jump on a flight. I'll get back to you. By the time that flight, that two-hour flight landed, he sent me a zip file. And all of you that are starting businesses, you know how expensive that is, what that's worth. He sent me a complete zip file of, to this day, all of the graphics that After Chloe uses, the mm. fonts license everything everything that a graphic artist mm. would charge you probably almost a thousand dollars for probably a lot more worth more now yeah and he told me i want you to go to social media and i want you to choose a platform that you love i said i don't know social media i said well i really like instagram and he said okay go to instagram i said okay so i got on instagram and I studied all night on YouTube because YouTube was my friend. And I learned this, this program that I paid $1.99. I couldn't go and eat Jack in the Box that night. But I went and I bought this program on mm. my iTunes.